In this video, you'll learn how to create a calendar that displays Gravity Forms data using the Gravity Calendar add-on. So to start off, um, everything starts with a form. So you'll need a form uh, that's capturing event information. And uh, I've got one here called Event Listings. So if we just preview this, you can see that we've got a form set up here to capture event listings. So we've got the event title, location, and um, most importantly, the start date. Um, if there's no date field in your form, uh, there's no way to plot that entry on a calendar. So that's the most important field. And then we've also got a start time field and an end time and some additional uh, fields for the event description and some other stuff. So now we want to take the events that have already been added and plot those on a calendar. So that's really easy once you've got the Gravity Calendar plugin installed. All you need to do is hover over your form here and click Create a Calendar. So that'll take you through to create a new calendar feed. So the first thing we need to do is give our feed a name. So next we need to select a start date. And as you can see, this is actually required. Um, the end date is not required. So if you don't have an end date, um, the calendar will just assume that the start date and the end date are the same. In other words, the event is just uh, for that day. So that's fine. We can leave the event, uh, we can leave the <laughs> end date uh, blank. But we do need a start date. And as you can see, um, it's actually picked up the start date field here already, as you can see. So we can leave that as is and scroll down. Here we can select, optionally, we can select a start time and end time for our events. Um, and as you can see, again, it's picked up the start time field in our form and the end time field in our form. So that's already done for us, which is great. So the next step is to add the event title. Now, obviously every event that you enter into your form might have a different name. Um, so you don't want to go ahead and enter one title in here. Otherwise, all your events will have that same title. Instead, what you can do is use a Gravity Forms merge tag to actually pull the event title dynamically for each event. So we can do that just by clicking on this uh, merge tag button here. And we can just insert the event title merge tag. So that will pull the event title uh, field from our form and it'll populate it dynamically for each event. There we go. And we can do the same thing for the event description because our form actually had an event description field. So we're gonna to wanna to pull that information in. There we go, event description. And finally, the event location. Again, same thing. We can pull in the event address here. We can either pull in the full address or we can simply just pull in part of it. So let's just go ahead and pull in the city. So the next field is the event URL. And um, this is a URL that uh, users will be taken to when they actually click on the event. So if your form has a URL field, you can put it in here. Uh, if your events don't have a associated URL, then you can just leave that blank. So the next step is to choose an event color. Um, so this is just your preference as to which color your events will display as. So we've got blue selected. Um, let's go ahead and change that to purple. All right, so the next step is to configure the calendar layout settings. So this again is required. Now there are a number of different layouts that you can choose for your calendar. So if I open that drop down, you can see there's grid layouts, which uh, will display uh, a month, a week or a day. There's an agenda layout for a week and a day. And there's a list layout 
uh, which can display events for the year, month, week, or day. So there's really a lot of options here. And if you're not quite sure, um, you know, what the difference, difference is between these layouts, uh, feel free to just experiment, uh, try some different ones. Um, the classic uh, calendar layout is the grid layout. So we'll stick with that for now. So next is sizing. Uh, we can set the height of the calendar. Um, by default, that's just set, set to auto, um, but you can input a fixed height if you want to. The next thing is to configure the calendar controls. Now, uh, calendar controls are for uh, switching the date or um, even switching the layout uh, from the front end. So as you can see by default, there's a couple of controls set up here. There's arrows here uh, where users can navigate to previous months or um, future months. There's also um, a title, which is displaying in the center there. And in the top right, there's actually a couple of uh, different controls here for um, changing the layout of the calendar from the front end, which is quite nice. So to alter the calendar controls, you can simply just drag and drop them into the different uh, sections here. Okay. So again, if we scroll down here, we've got a live um, preview of the calendar, which is quite nice. So you can check out what it looks like before you actually go ahead and embed it. And as you can see, the different controls here allow us to just change the layout and uh, as it says it's just showing uh, sample data for now all right um, so if we scroll past the preview we've got a couple of other <laughs> settings to configure here so there's an option here where you can dynamically load events now this is um, really useful if you have a lot of events in your calendar and you don't want to load them all at once. Instead, if you opt to dynamically load events, then the calendar will only load events uh, for the date range being displayed, um, which can really help to speed things up. Again, if your calendar has like thousands of events, um, there's no point loading all of those if only uh, five of them are uh, being displayed um, on the screen. So this is helpful to speed things up if your calendar has a lot of events. So the next setting, no current events behavior. Uh, sometimes when you load a calendar, especially for the current day, there might not be any, any events to display. So if that is the case, what should happen? Um, so you can either just stay on today, you can show the last event whenever that might have been, or you can show the next event. All right, so the next option, localization. Um, again, if you just hover over the question mark, you'll get some additional information. And what this can do, what this will do is just um, alter the date formatting, uh, for example, just depending on um, the language that you select here. The next option, allow HTML content. So when this is enabled, HTML content um, it can be used in the event title and description, which is quite nice and um, allow event editing. If you enable this, you can select a user role that has the ability to essentially drag and drop events on the calendar from the front end to change the date and time, which is a really nice feature and makes it really easy to um, update and edit existing events. So we'll go ahead and give administrators and editors this ability. All right, so the last two options, um, here you can filter displayed entries using conditional logic. So what this allows you to do is actually set up certain conditions and um, only when events match those conditions will they be displayed in the calendar. So for example, if you wanted to limit your calendar to events that were only starting after uh, July, 2022, uh, you could set up set up a condition to do that. And finally, calendar subscription. So this is a really neat uh, feature. You can actually create a calendar subscription link, uh, which allows users to subscribe to your Gravity Calendar from their Google or Apple Calendar. Um, so if you just enable this, 
and then uh, save the settings. Here we go, as you can see, it's actually generated a subscription link. And um, you can use this subscription link to uh, sync your calendar with your Google or Apple calendar, which is really handy um, if you want everything on one calendar. So this is a really neat feature. If you want to learn more, just check out our documentation and that'll be linked in the description below. Okay, so now that we've finally finished configuring our calendar, the next step is to embed it on a page or post. And as you can see, we can do that using the GV Calendar shortcode here, which is provided for us. Alternatively, we can just use the Gravity Calendar block. Um, and if you're using the WordPress block editor, that is the, um, the easiest way to do it. If you're not using the block editor um, and you're using a different page builder or the classic ed editor maybe, then uh, the shortcode will be the best way to do that. So let's go ahead and create a new page. And here I am in the block editor. Um, so I'll give my page a title. And all I'm gonna do is add a new Gravity Calendar block. So as you can see, there's actually three different Gravity View Calendar blocks. Um, the Gravity View Calendar buttons and Calendar Link are for displaying uh, subscription links or a button to download a uh, ICS file. If you wanna learn more about those, um, check out our documentation. But for now, we, we're just going to embed our calendar using the Gravity View Calendar block. So after selecting that, I'll need to select my form here on the right. And my form was event listings. And now I need to select a calendar feed. And my feed was my event calendar. There we go. And as you can see, our calendar loads a little preview here in the block editor, which is really nice. So let's go ahead and uh, publish that. View page. Okay, so here is our calendar showing events that we've collected with Gravity Forms. And um, if I just hover over an event here, as you can see, I get the event description pop up. And I can also just click to drag and drop these events on the front end to change the date. And then these calendar controls allow me to change the layout on the front end. And I can navigate between months. All right, so um, that has been an introduction to our Gravity Calendar uh, plugin. There's a lot more you can do with it. Um, so be sure to check out our documentation. And um, if you have any questions, contact our support team.